There's a video on uh, social media that thousands, I mean thousands of people are watching uh, at the moment. It's of the Iron Man actor Robert Downey Jr. giving a seven-year-old boy a 3D printed superhero prosthetic arm. It's a crazy video. Uh, but it's not just something that's happening in Hollywood. An IT consultant from Milton Keynes is using his 3D printer to do the same thing here in Britain. Uh, through the charity Enable, Drew Murray gets matched up with families who need his help in designing and making uh, prosthetics mainly for children. And he joins me now. Drew, very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the programme, sir. Uh, I've got to ask you how you got involved in this. Um, so I, I read an article uh, around Christmas time last year uh, by Enable with the work that they were doing and the community that they were established. And I found it really interesting, really empowering um, with the potential to really improve people's lives. So uh, from reading that article, I contacted Enable and through that process, I became what they call a maker, um, making and being matched to children in the UK to make devices. So, OK, let's get, there's quite a lot to take in it. You've got a 3D printer. That's right, yes. OK. So how, how do you get it to do this sort of work? Just expect, because people may not know how it works. Just tell them how, how, it, how it operates. Um, so a 3D printer uh, works, as the name suggests, uh, like a normal printer, but in 3D. So it heats up and extrudes hot plastic in a series of layers. So it prints one layer, like it would print a picture, and then it just moves it down a very small amount and prints another layer on top. So over time of several hours, it's able to create 3D objects. Now, we, we know, I know more and more people are using 3D printers. They're still about 4D printers. But how did you decide you wanted one of these things in the first place? Well, I've, I've been a bit of a technology geek. I mean, I'm an IT consultant anyway, so um, I got one more uh, just to experiment and play with myself, uh, make some toys for my two kids, and just to really explore and play with. So uh, that's how I came into getting one. See, I remember hearing about 3D printers a couple of years ago. It was on a Radio 4 documentary. I thought, that sounds... There's a stuff of science fiction. It ain't never going to happen. And here you are. You are making prosthetics using your 3D printer for children. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite remarkable. It's, um, it's a very rewarding experience, and um, it opens up options to, to some children where there is no real option to them, the chance to explore, try something new, and it might really uh, be a life-changing event for the children and, to, and for the parents themselves to have a new option. So how do you make sure it fits? I mean, because part of the problem with prosthetics is getting a perfect match because it's all very expensive. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's one of the big advantages of 3D printing is it's quite cost effective and you can, you can customise them to the recipient. So, uh, Brooks' uh, mum sent me some pictures of her hand uh, and then I used some computer software to size them and using the Enable provided prosthetic designs, I was able to scale that so it would fit Brooks' arm um, uh, and then the 3D printer does the rest and, and off we go. Stay where you are for a second, Drew. Let me bring Nicola into the conversation. Nicola's daughter, Brooke, received her prosthetic hand on Saturday. Uh, Nicola, very good afternoon. I know Brooke's uh, only three years old. How's she getting on? Um, she's getting on just fine with it at the minute. She's showing it off to everyone and picking things up <laughs> and just living a normal three-year-old life at the minute with it. So can I ask you, what, what condition does Brooke have? Um, I can't even pronounce it that long. It's just a rare condition that affects, like, one in 32,000 children. And, and this prosthetic that she's now been given, this thing that's been printed on a 3D printer, does it simply just fit over and help Brooke handle her life a bit better? Yeah, she now can use a scooter and, like, hold a scooter properly so she doesn't fall off and, like, doesn't wobble with it or anything and, like, carries everything in her hand at the minute, like, that she couldn't hold before. So it's just amazing how much it's already changed life, and she's only had it, like, five days, six days. Because the trouble with prosthetics are that the, the, the really good stuff has always been my eye-wateringly expensive, and if you look at the old-fashioned prosthetics, they just, they looked cumbersome, they looked awful. These new plastic devices, which, which basically are made to, to measure on a printer, are extraordinary. Yeah, definitely. I would have never thought I could have found something like this, ever. And how how often will she need this, because she's going to grow, of course, will she need this prosthetic updating? Um, I'm not quite sure, because at the minute she's only three, so like it's all padded out at the minute. So I think I can just take keep taking the padding out slowly until we need 
a big one and then that's when I'll probably just get hold of Drew again and see what he can do. Drew, I tell you what, with all the advances advances we've seen in technology of the last 15, 20, to think of a number, right? This has got to be one of the most amazing. Uh, absolutely. I think um, 3D printing is very much still in its infancy and it's got a long way to go. Uh, I know some people in the technology arena are holding it as the next industrial revolution. Uh, I don't know if it will be that much of a, a jump, step and change, but you know, um, I'm very interested to see where this technology goes and the way in which it can be applied uh, to help improve people's lives. Amazing. I wish you both the very best. Good luck. Nicola Thank and Drew, fantastic. Just a, what a fantastic achievement. 3D printing, making prosthetic bits for children. Um, you know, in life, you can make a little bit of a difference for someone else. You've done a good thing, haven't you?